What's up my friends, I'm Harv, I'm a videographer and on this channel I make videos about videography. In this video I'm getting swifty because I'm checking out the H&Y Swift system. What I've got here is the Filmmaker Starter Kit and it's a magnetic solution for adding ND filters and a matte box to your camera rig without the need for 19mm support bars. I want to see just what it is, how it works, how well it's built, what kind of user experience you have with it and most importantly, whether it's any good. As ever, I've timestamped everything below so you can just skip to the bit you want. This channel now has a non-profit Patreon, the idea being that any funds from Patreon I put back into the channel, I buy equipment, and then I give the gear away to my backers. If that's of interest, if you want to be you know, in for winning some gear, definitely check it out, it's linked below, and um, the cost is just the cost of a cup of coffee, so... So what is the Swift system from H&Y? So here I have the Swift system attached to my Sony a7 IV and there are several different components. Let me show you. So we start with the component I was most excited to get my hands on and that of course is the matte box. I was struck immediately by just how light this thing is. And then we have the Swift ND filter which feels solid but again I was really struck with the sheer lack of weight of this thing. It attaches to the matte box with a nice snap. I'm also using this magnetic bridge ring, which is just the go-between component between the Revo ring type products and the Swiss system. And then of course I can attach it to a Revo ring. The version I have here is the one without any kind of filters, just so I can attach it to any lens with a filter thread between 67 and 82 millimeters. So let's attach it to a rig. Here's mine, albeit stripped down a little bit, there's no microphone. And of course I want to add, you know, the matte box, I want to add the ND filter. So first we start off with the Revo ring. As I mentioned, this lets me attach the Swift system to any lens with a filter thread between 67 and 82 millimeters, although you can get lots of different sizes of Revo ring via H&Y's site. So I've secured the Revo ring, it's magnetized of course, so the ND filter just snaps on, and then the matte box snaps onto that. And they do kind of interlock, which is quite nice. And then to disassemble, it's it's insanely fast, which is just really handy when you're just on the go. This system is not just for videographers. There are lots of other accessories that are more suited for photographers, landscape photography in particular, as you can get graduated filters and that kind of thing. Next on to build quality, and on the whole, the Swift system is made from either aluminium or thin plastic, you know, so it's super lightweight, and I guess it has to be, because you know, you're relying on magnets to hold everything in place. The design is really sleek and well thought out. Design elements I particularly like are the indents you get on the Swift adapter and ND filters, so that the matte box snaps smartly into position. I also love the smooth and precise action of the Swift ND filter. It's a great design. Next onto the user experience side of things, and I found that shooting run and gun, I found it really easy just to kind of whip my camera out of the bag and grab the matte box and just snap it on, and that's it. I mean, the whole point of it being magnetized is the practicality factor, isn't it? I found that going around, the thought of getting more contrast in every shot was well worth you know, the extra effort of bringing it along and the time it takes to attach it. If you already own a Revo Ring adapter, then great, you are ready. You are ready to add Swift components. However, if like me, you own the ND and polarizing version of the Revo Ring, things get a little bit more tricky. So this original Revo Ring ND and polarizing filter is already magnetic, which is just brilliant forethought on H&Y's part. However, when you, want, when you add the matte box to it, because there are two rings, there's a, the polarizing ring and the ND ring, tilt the camera the wrong way and it just wants to rotate itself. Don't get me wrong, it's still possible to use that combination. It's just better when you're shooting on, say, a tripod. And it's better off when you position the rings in a certain way so that it can't rotate as easily. I also have a small issue with the Swift ND filter, and that is that it starts at 1.5 stops of ND, and the maximum is five stops. And for many video guys, I would argue most video guys, 
that's not quite enough. In this shot, for example, you can see it's overcast. Quel surprise, right? I live in England. And I'm shooting on my Sony a7 IV in S-Log3 with maximum ND, and I wasn't comfortable opening up my aperture more than, say, f2.5. In sunlight, I have to imagine I'd have to close it down to at least f4. However, HMY have got you covered. They actually do a six to nine stop version of the very ND. And there's also the option of adding a clip on ND, which will be a fixed amount. And they also have drop-in filters that you can use within the Swift system, which includes various flavors of ND and circular polarizers. So just look at this, right? It's a, it's a big old stack of lens hoods and Every time I buy a new lens, this isn't all of them either, but I'll just pop these down. And every time I buy a new lens, the lens hood just goes straight on there and stacked. Now being a video guy, I'm probably never gonna use those lens hoods because uh, we like putting ND filters on and that's kind of annoying because, you know, I definitely will be going around and getting shots and sometimes you, you'll come up against flaring, uh, at least reduced contrast. You can see where I'm going with this. Enter the Swift map box as a solution for this. So I want to show you guys now some with and without footage of this. And I also want to show you what the Swift ND filter looks like from minimum to maximum. Let's do it. So in this shot, I have the map box attached and mid shot, I'm just gonna take it off and see what kind of effect that has on our footage. And boom, straight away, you can see massive difference to the contrast. The shadows now look really quite washed out and looking at them side by side, what a difference. You don't even really need to look at the waveform to see the huge amount of contrast and uh, information lost in those shadows. One thing that I know lots of you are gonna ask about in the comment section is, is there an X pattern on the Swift ND? And no. Going from minimum to maximum ND, I couldn't pick up any kind of X pattern. If you can see some vignette, well, that's from the lens I'm using, which is the Sigma 50mm f1.4. Anyway, now it's time for my pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros, because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So firstly, the pros, and I love the excellent, very thoughtful design of this system. The convenience factor is just off the scale. The build quality is really good throughout and I love how lightweight it is. This is just such an innovative concept. I heard rumblings about this project when I first reviewed the Revo Ring and I was excited. The matte box makes a significant difference versus without it. Big surprise, right? But you know, that's what you want. I couldn't detect any kind of X pattern from the Swift ND on its maximum setting and that's always a good thing. And then the cons and the Swift variable ND is only five stops. I'd argue it's not the most practical when you use this new system with the original Revo Ring ND, but for me at least it's workable. Finally to my opinion, and obviously this is a really cool system that's going to really appeal to run and gun video guys over say cinematographers with larger heavier rigs. I suspect HMY wished they'd come up with the Swift system before the original Revo Ring dropped but you know, hindsight, and it doesn't stop it from still being uh, just excellent. Obviously I prefer an ND filter with more stops of ND, not just five, but what can you do? It's still a really good ND filter. It's well designed, it's really super light, so, uh, you know, it's really just a minor thing. So really the best thing for me about the Swift system is the convenience factor. One thing that I didn't touch on in my pros and cons is value. The filmmaker kit that I got which includes the Swift ND, the matte box, and the Revo Ring adapter. That comes to $330, X shipping and customs. And then I also got a magnetic adapter, which is a further $30. So I was really torn as to whether what I have is good value. On the one hand, that's not an insignificant amount of money but on the other hand, it's a super cool product. And I think really what you're paying for is brilliant design, really lovely build quality, and then there's that convenience. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. My question of the day for you is this. Do you think the HMY Swift system is good value or not? Why? Let me know what you think in the comments section below and I will see you down there. I've now filmed hundreds of videos about video and audio, of which YouTube has recommended this video for you to watch next, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.